Hello and welcome to a very special episode of 100 Yards of Football Sports Talk Radio. I'm your producer, Jeremiah Long, and joining me in this very classic episode about Alabama, specifically LeBron Ray, the defensive end. We are talking NFL draft prospects with my host, Logan Landers. How's it going, man? Hey, what's up, Jeremiah? Talking about LeBron Ray, a guy who's battled a lot of injuries at Alabama over his tenure. But he said, you know what, I'm working through him. I'm ready to get in the draft, and we'll see where he can end up in about a month in April. Absolutely. And for everybody watching, tell us, how excited are you for the draft? How excited are you as an Alabama fan to see your players go into the draft, to see those prospects? And we know that a lot of Alabama people are going to get drafted, so we wanted to bring you information about every player in the Alabama lineup that's going to be entering the draft so you have the best information about what's going on and what's happening in the world of football. And that's what we love to do here at 100 Yards of Football. So thank you so much for watching Live and thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Mr. Logan Landers, NFL draft prospect, LeBron Ray, the defensive end out of Alabama. What do we have to look forward to and where do we think that he'll land? So, like I mentioned in the opening, this guy has been battling injury after injury after injury. He takes those hits, man, but he keeps getting back up, and that shows some fight in him, and I like it. But let's go back to his high school days because this is a very interesting prospect here. So back in 2016 to 17, he was probably the top player in the state of Alabama in terms of high school. Five-star defensive lineman prospect, ranked 26 nationally, and ranked number one in terms of defensive ends in a multitude of different draft sites. So they mean there was a lot of hype around LeBron Ray. We go into 2017. Not starting off good. He suffered a foot injury that limited his playing time in his first year. So during that time, uh, he only had five tackles. Uh, not much going on there, right? 2018, he was able to get a little bit more healthy, and he was able to finally uh, get some work coming in here. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, got a season-ending foot injury this year also. But he did have 39 tackles, two passes defended, and two and a half sacks. 2019. Once again, just had trouble, man. A lower leg injury this time. He had nine tackles in total, one sack, and four of those being solo, five of those being assisted. So like I said, he just he also get, did cause a forced fumble. 2020, he returned to the field after missing 2019. With that. But unfortunately, he couldn't get past it again. Once again, got hurt, uh, played in only seven games in total, three of those being starts. Um but he had 12 tackles, uh, half a sack, and not much else going on there. And then this past year in 2021, he came back for another season trying to get things going. He did miss Miami and Mercer, but he did go on to play in the final 13 games this past season uh, with two of those being starts. But like I said, since he wasn't really being able to start, and it's Alabama, he wasn't able to rack up a whole lot of stats, but he did have 11 tackles on the year for him with one sack. So, I mean, you, this is someone that you can't really look at the stats and say, wow, this, this is a top-tier prospect or nothing like that, just because injuries, mostly leg injuries or foot injuries, anywhere lower body, that's really hurt this guy's career, unfortunately. And for someone who was a top prospect coming out of high school and then going to Alabama, you know, the probably premier school in college football, having all this hype around him, just not being able to really stay on the field because of those injuries, it, you hate to see it. But let's talk more about 6'5", 283-pound guy out of Alabama. What I like about him, some of his strengths and some of his weaknesses. So some strengths, like I said, he delivers a strong punch at the line of scrimmage, uses his hands, sheds some blocks, and he can make some plays um, out of there. It's in the hole, right, going backfield or outside the box, too. He's got good lower body strength. To anchor inside for the most part. He has a lean and he has good lean and good leverage against the run. Um, he's tough for just one offensive lineman to move around so that he gets double teamed. That's why maybe another reason why his stats aren't as uh, blown up as they could be. He's got good leverage. He's got a tall, solid frame, solid blink to him. He's got a good job of really just combining his strength and footwork to get inside to fill some of those holes and recover from certain blocks that the offensive lineman tried to get on him. 
and, you know, just trying to get everything going on there. And some of the weaknesses, like I mentioned, mostly injuries is what's really hurt this guy's career. Unfortunately, you know, it, it is what it is. We see it all the time um, with athletes. But LeBron, right, that's probably his biggest weakness is just he hasn't been able to play a whole lot of football. And, and that, you know, you hate to see that. You really do. But some of the weaknesses he needs to improve on at the NFL besides just staying on the field mostly, um, he can sometimes, once he gets double teamed, that's pretty much it. He's going he's gonna to be taken out of the play. Um, he doesn't shed blocks the best with the, with the most of them. Um, he's not the most flexible guy in the world either. And he sometimes can miss tackles even when he gets his hands on somebody. Instead of more of a wrap tackle or someone, you know, just trying to take you to the ground and sometimes just not having the most strong hands to kind of hold on to him and drag him down. Um, and he's also, he doesn't have the best speed in the world. He, he has decent speed, but not that elite speed you like to see where you can kind of get around the corner and he can sometimes get just get taken out of play by the offensive tackles. But final thoughts on LeBron Ray, you know, he's going to be a late round pick for sure. Um, I think mostly just because you're not going to draft this guy earlier just due to his injuries. But I think that you can draft him late and see what he can do in training camp, see what he can do. Um, maybe a practice squad player, put him on special teams perhaps, and have him just work your way through your system wherever he does end up in the NFL. And I think that he could be, uh, you know, give him a couple of seasons and he could definitely be a solid piece for a team. I, mean, I don't think, I don't know if he's going to say turn into a star player. I, that'd be great if he does. I mean, what a story that would be. But I think that if you can get him on the field, you know, if he can show that he's going to be working with some of the best medical staffs in the in the league now. So hopefully any knacking injuries he had out of college, he can get those cleared up real quick. But I think you go with a late round draft pick for this guy just based off potential and see what he can do, work his way through the system. And I think he'll be a nice piece for an NFL team in a couple of seats. No doubt about that. We definitely want to see that. Find him a great spot with, with a team that he can have some time with. Give him some time, you know, in the locker room and in the system to build up that strength, to find, you know, those those physicalities, you know, that have been, you know, really struggling with throughout the years to find a way to, you know, push past that, strengthen that even further, you know, and come in as a powerhouse. I mean, he's coming from Alabama. He's probably got some great connections, you know, throughout the, the football world. He may have some legacy, you know, stuff there with people he's known or people have been his family, but in the past, but he has definitely positioned himself to have a good chance to come in and try to show what he can do. And so we want to see that. He's an Alabama player. He's the defensive end. He's got some great potential. We know that three years ago when he was, you know, more free of injuries, that he was coming on the field and he was getting some great stats. He had a lot more tackles. So we want to see him continue to do that. And as the viewers, we want to hear from you. Tell us, what do you think? The Brian Ray, where will he end up? It's a, are you an Alabama fan? Do you believe that he'll get drafted? And when do you think, and where do you think that he'll get drafted? We want to hear from you in the comments. And if you're watching us live, thank you so much. And if you're listening to our podcast, thank you again. But if you're not listening to our podcast, come and join us. 100 Yards of Football. We broadcast live every single week, and we have multiple podcast episodes that come out every single week to make sure you get all the information and everything that you love about 100 Yards of Football. So join us over on Spotify, on Apple Podcast, Amazon, over on Google Podcast, or anywhere that you love listening to podcasts. We are there for you. Just look up 100 Yards of Football, and you'll see our 50-yard line football brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network. So, Mr. Logan Landers, thank you so much for that NFL draft prospect from LeBron Ray for the defensive end from Alabama. We will be back with another live episode right after this.